Um, hello, everyone. Shirana is going to be doing sort of intermediary questioning because Teresa can only hear his voice, actually. So uh, uh, a little bit hard of hearing. Yeah. So I can't I'll hear a thing. You yes. can't hear a thing. You can. You can. Um, so, firstly, you were born in 1898. Tell us about your childhood in the village and what led you to lead such a giving life. Uh, what did lady say? The young lady says, uh, tell us a little bit about your childhood life. I was very, very poor. Sometimes, if nobody looked, I had to stop down by the roadside and get some grass to eat. Did this satisfy my hunger? But I determined that as long as it possible within my power, I will see that nobody needs to eat grass. That's what I'm doing now. I don't eat grass anymore. I don't give them grass to eat either. It's just ice cream. <laughs> um, you lived in Hong Kong and worked for Madame Chang. What are your impressions of this period of your life and what was happening in China? You work in Hong Kong, yeah. and you were work, working with Madam Cheng. What is your impression of that period of time you work in Hong Kong? Madam Cheng was too far above me. I could not reach her. <laughs> <laughs> there were three sisters. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Talk yeah. about the three sisters, yeah. And I can't talk about them. They, they, they are so far, but they were in heaven and I was on earth, I couldn't reach them. <laughs> uh, tell us your experience about going to London to study nursing. Uh, during the Second World War, I saw a lot of, after the bombing, when we come up from shelter, I see house leg hanging on a tree, people crying with pain, and I said to look after them, I need to be a nurse to care for them because poor people, old people can go begging, but sick people cannot. So to be more useful to people, uh, to be a nurse is even better. So I hitchhiked all the way to England. I didn't have money to buy tickets. So I offered to wash dishes on a boat. I took a uh, cargo boat took 49 days so I could have a good time on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, sister, you, you, were, you were at that time nearly half a century young. Yeah, well, 47 so, years, ha ha young. <laughs> <laughs> so how can you qualify? I went and I said to the uh, matron, I said, I am very, very over it because I take in girls 17 to 25. I said, I want to do nursing, not to earn a living, but to care for the, those who cannot pay for nurses' care. So those who are very, very poor, I will devote my time caring for them, not take one cent from them. So that is the right spirit for a nurse. Yes, we accept you, I was very happy. And people, because of my small size in England, the, you see that the nurses are 17, 25 years old. I was very small. They always refer to me as a child. What they didn't want to do, they all say, give to the child to do. And I try greatly did it. I went there to work. They give me work, the more the better. Okay, from there, you went to Paraguay for eight years to work with the Society of Brothers. Tell us about that time. And there were uh, German Jews who were ill-treated by Hitler and escaped to South America. So I went to look up there and they said, we have no money to pay. I said, that's what I want. I don't want to be paid. I just want to work. They say, oh, they're very good. So whatever they don't want to do, they push it to me. Give it to the child to do. But different places I went for eight years. And I was away from my mother for 32 years. 
And then my mother said, poor people are everywhere. Mother, there's only one. I'm getting old. I said, oh, only 82. <laughs> And I came back to her, she was very happy. My, my nickname is Puppy because of bonnet and a dog ear. She thought I was still a small girl, so she calls me small dog puppy. My puppy has come back, thought I was still a small girl. I was 32 years old. No, you were 62. Yeah, I did, I said. <laughs> Forget to count. <laughs> And um, tell us about setting up home for the aged sick. And I call myself home for the aged sick, look after the sick and the uh, aged people who could not pay. They, my sister supported me. Then, why happened after that? <laughs> <laughs> you started out. the home and I you continue with, yeah. uh, as a matron of the home, yeah. taking care of 250 old people and 49 workers and their families. Then all my workers are really happy with me. I was like their mother. And until years after I retired, they still came to see me. We are like a family, because they were to me like my sisters. So this is my life. I love my workers, and I love them like my family members. So. And then I told them, I work with you, and you treat my patients as your family members. The moment you raise your voice at them, you come to my office, I will advise you to treat them as your relative. But the second time you do that, out you go for the front door. Tell us the time when you uh, were told to retire from the home. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, <laughs> share because, with us, sister, share with us. I started the home. So eventually, the, 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 so we had to have a president. The president said, um, we, uh, You are too old. Uh, you are too old, you, we, we are afraid you will give wrong medicine. I said, look, 45 years I work here. I have never one given one wrong pill. So he said, but uh, by counting your all, I said, how do you count? Uh, 45 plus 10 plus 10, 10 plus 10 is 85. <laughs> I said, all right, I will step down. But I had a better job because in a hospital, everything is under the eye of the government. You have to do it very well and correctly. I would go to the district, to their home, to the people who could not pay to go to the hospital. There, I look after them, and I didn't charge them one cent. I would go begging for food and for, for things for them. And I go around asking for money for them to pay their rent, pay their doctor's fees. And so I was a chief beggar for my poor family and old people. Until now, I'm still doing it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Share with us about your heart to heart. When did it start and what is it all about? Heart to heart. Heart to heart is they are looking after poor people who do not have enough, caring for those who do not have their basic needs, especially those who don't have shelter, they don't have food. I am a chief beggar, so I got a big begging bowl. I go around begging. Tell us why you don't like the word charity. I do not call my work charity or service. I call it hard to heart sharing. What I have, I share with you. Charity sounds as if I have plenty, I give you my leftover. <laughs> a service, I do not serve them. I don't go on my knees and serve them. I share with them what I have. What I don't have, I, I cannot share. 
Mine is sharing from my loving heart to your needy heart. So I call it heart to heart. I don't call it charity or service. I call it sharing Thank lovingly. You. Thank you.